You caught me making my famous Tistina's pizza rolls. Let me show you what I've been cooking so far. Nothing. That's right, Konami. This is protest art, and you're gonna watch it. Good afternoon, Jank Enthusiasts. I'm MBT, and this is 10 Minute Testing. How many times are we going to have to meet like this? A fun, interesting, promising first wave of TCG support. A prayer that the second wave will include the pieces necessary to make the deck competitive. A slow, unceasing depression during release week. A meaningless TMT that gets 20,000 views. <sighs> Here's Tistina. Enjoy the Totino's pizza rolls. So here's the list. As always, I'll give you a background about the archetype, a little bit of a discussion about what I hope the deck can do, and of course, the card by card. But first, this video is sponsored by Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck. Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck is the number one place to go if you need a pack simulator, a card database, or want to read a wealth of strategy articles. They also post breakdowns and lists from every major TCG and Master Duel tournament, including the Master Circuit Series. Give them a look at www.ygopro.deck.com. With that, let's tinker with Tistina. Tistina is... God, I really don't know what to say about this archetype. I can't imagine a TCG archetype in history that's been less hype than this one. From a design perspective, it looks almost exactly like an Emancipator, like Sentinel is just Raptite, right? And from a gameplay perspective, it's not much to write home about either. These cards facilitate a game plan that sets monsters face down. Uh, this does sound okay on paper, think how often people thrust for Karma Cannon these days, but in practice, it's just a board wipe that's worse than most other board wipes because there are some cards it can't out. What's incredibly frustrating about this deck is the fact that none of the cards make sense in conjunction with each other. Why does Sentinel pop? Nothing here pluses off of that. Why does Breath have to put something face down in order to search? Why does the field spell only summon the boss when your opponent has face up cards if the whole purpose is to put them face down? Why does the deck imply you need to play the Xyz if the main disruptor of the deck requires you to sit on Crystal God? Why isn't the Xyz Crystal God on the field? Why does Hound have a direct attacking effect? in 2023. Okay, before I burst a blood vessel, let's get into the card by card. First up, the Tistinas, three copies of Demigod. If you control a Tistina, you can special summon this card from your hand, then you can add a Tistina spell trap from your deck to your hand. That's one effect, which means that you can Ash Blossom the summon. During your opponent's turn, if you control Crystal God, Tistina, you can change as many monsters your opponent controls as possible to face down defense position, then send all face-up cards they control to the graveyard. That is a hard once. Next, we have three copies of Sentinel. If this is in your hand or graveyard and you control Light Tistina, you can special this card, target a Tistina or a face-down card you control, destroy it, then add a Tistina from your deck to your hand. Two copies of Hound of the Tistina. If this is in your hand or graveyard and you control a Light Tistina monster, you can special summon this card. That's a hard once. And Tistina monsters you control can attack directly if your opponent controls a face-down defense position monster. Next up, we're playing one copy of Returned of the Tistina. If this card is in your hand, you can target a Tistina you control, except Returned, special summon this card, and its level becomes the targeted monster's level. And if it's in your graveyard, you can target an Aqua Xyz you control, and it becomes material. One copy of Fallen of the Tistina. This can be sent from the hand or field to the graveyard to put a Divine Domain Bat Tistina from your deck face-up in your field zone. If a face-up Tistina spell trap you control is destroyed by an opponent's card effect while this card is in your graveyard, banish this card to summon a light Tistina monster from your hand, deck, or graveyard. Finally, we have one copy of the Crystal God Tistina. During your main phase, you can change as many monsters your opponent controls as possible to face down defense position, then send all face-up cards your opponent controls to the graveyard, and if this card in its owner's possession is destroyed by an opponent's card, you can change as many monsters your opponent controls as possible to face down defense position, then send the face-up ones to the graveyard. Those are both hard onces. We're also playing one copy of Reaper Foom. After that, we've got three copies of Breath of the Tistina. This is a continuous spell. During your main phase, you get an extra normal summon. Uh, you can target a face-up monster you control, or if you control a light Tistina, target a face-up monster on the field instead. Change that monster to face-down defense position, then add a Tistina from your deck to your hand, except for Breath. And two copies of Divine Domain Bat Tistina. During your main phase, you can send a Tistina from your deck to the graveyard. Then if your opponent controls three or more face-up cards, you can special summon a Crystal God Tistina from your hand or deck. And if this card in your field zone is destroyed by an opponent's card effect, you can special a Tistina from your deck or graveyard. We've got 
one terraforming, double small world, and all the non-engine that's fit to print. Three copies of Fenrir, three Ash Blossom, a Valor, and a Biru for a cross-out designator package, double tasking thrust, one talent, one change of heart, double eclipse, and triple infinite impermanence in the extra. We've got Zeus, Typhon, the Liba, and Gustav Max line, Tistina, the divinity that defies darkness. If this card is special summoned, you can send all face-down cards your opponent controls to the graveyard, and once per turn, if this card has Crystal God, Tistina as material, detach a material, it gains 2,000 attack until the end of the opponent's turn. If it's destroyed by an opponent's card, while it has material, special a Tistina from your graveyard. We've got a Baguska, a Downard, an Abyss Dweller, a Fortune Tune, a Triheart, a Unicorn, double SP Little Knight, a Pit Knight Early, and a Mascarena. In the side, we've got some Bistials, Droll and Lockbird, Lightning Storm and Harpies, Herald of the Abyss, Dimensional Barrier, Evenly Match, and Discordance of the Tistina. Activate one of these effects if you control a Tistina, banish a card from your opponent's graveyard face down. If you control a Tistina monster special summon from the extra deck, banish them all from your opponent's graveyard face down. It can be banished from the graveyard to target a Tistina in your graveyard, add it to your hand, and you can only use one of those effects per turn. So with that, let's jump into the games. Our first match is up against Predaplant Branded, and this is about as good as we could hope for in terms of an opponent. You can see that they've opened a copy of Darlington Cobra, which is going to drastically decrease the amount of Predaplant cards they can find, and we've opened an Ash Blossom for the Branded Fusion. If we lose to this, it'd sure be embarrassing. We're going to begin with Fallen of the Tistina for Batistina, then we're going to go for the Demigod. That's going to grab us a Breath. We will go ahead and go Sentinel, target the Breath so we can pop it and grab ourselves another Sentinel. We'll use Batistina to send a copy of Hound of the Tistina, summon it, and then this is literally the end board going first. Mask Arena and Pit Knight early. I am not joking. We'll just go ahead and set a copy of Crossout Designator and pass turn. Our opponent's going to begin with a hard drawn Aluber to complement the one already in the grip. They'll fire off the Branded Fusion, we'll fire off the Ash Blossom, and things are looking good. They're going to activate Preta Practice to summon out this Darling Tonia Cobra and grab a Preta Prime fusion. We'll activate the effect of the Mascarena, they will chain Preta Prime, and there is Trift Overdom. That's no big deal, because though it does walk over the early, we do get early back at end step. So we should be able to walk through this, we'll draw for turn, we'll lead with the Book of Eclipse, great, and now no interaction from our opponent, we'll go Sentinel into Book of Moon, and that ends the turn. That's, that's actually sufficient to end the turn. They're going to fire off this hard-drawn branded fusion, and we'll just scoop them up. Our second match is up against Demarincess, and this game showcases much more realistically how you're going to win most of your games. Our opponent's going to begin with a copy of, you guessed it, Pascalis. That's going to summon from their hand a copy of Spring Girl, then they'll go into a blue slug, activate the effect targeting the Spring Girl, and Spring Girl effect in order to mill a couple of cards, including a Battle Ocean. They'll go Seahorse into Sea Angel, then activate the effect of the Sea Angel for a dive. Next, they'll go Spring Girl, banish this copy of Seahorse, and make a Coral Anemone. That's going to grab back this copy of Sea Angel, then afterwards they can make a Coral Triangle and trigger the effect of the Coral Anemone to get back this copy of Battle Ocean before setting it. They'll overlay for a Bahamut Shark, and then use its effect to go into Totally Awesome before committing to an Aqua Argonaut, triggering the effect of the Battle Ocean to equip three and passing turn with two hand traps. We draw for turn, and this is pretty good. We're going to begin with a copy of Book of Eclipse to chase out the Totally Awesome. They'll negate with the Aqua Argonaut. Let's just do it again, I suppose. All right, nothing from our opponent left on their side of the field. Let's see what we can accomplish from this position. We're going to begin with a copy of Fallen of Tistina. That's going to set the field spell. We'll go back to Stina to get a copy of Crystal God onto the field. They will Valor the Crystal God and DD Crow the Sentinel in Graveyard. We can use the effect of this copy of Return to the Tistina to go into a generic rank 10. Here, Gustav Max into Liba, and oh, did you forget that we were playing a rank 10 suite? <laughs> okay, I guess we'll take it. So it's time for game three, and you know what that means, a best of three versus meta. Our opponent's playing Rescue Ace, like a real deck that people bring to tournaments. Let's see how we fare. They're going to begin with a copy of Airlifter, that's going to grab from deck to hand an emergency. Afterwards, going to special summon a Fire Engine as well, and then they're going to fire off this copy of Original Sinful Spoil Snake Eye for a Hydrant. They'll activate the effect of Emergency, pitching the Turbulence in hand, and then making an SP Little Knight. Somehow our opponent has finagled their way into losing to Infinite Impermanence. As we say in the business, we take those. They're going to shuffle four cards back into the deck and draw a card, the Dead Duster, activate the effect of the Hydrant for funsies, and then pass back to us. We'll begin with a return to the Tistina, and then go for Demigod. Our opponents could go SP Little Knight in order to banish the return, but this is still fine. We can set Breath of the Tistina here, and then activate the effect to switch our opponent's monster to face down and grab ourselves a copy of Sentinel. We'll use our extra normal on Sentinel, then use Sentinel to pop the Small World in order to grab the Field Spell. Let's go Divine Domain Batinista, and then send a copy of Hound of the Tistina to the Graveyard, summoning itself and going to the Battle Phase. We could attack directly if we want. Want. I mean, Hound's effect could be coming up. In main two, we're going to unfortunately go for the board we did last time, a Mascarena and a Pit Knight early, this time with a Crossout Designator and a Return from the Tistina on our side of the field. Our opponent's going to Feather Duster, we'll activate the effect of the Divine Domain to go into the Demigod, we'll activate the effect of the Mascarena chasing out the SP Little Knight, and our opponent will concede. So it's time for game two, and whoa, my opponent's hand is carried by that prosperity. Okay, let's see what they find off it. They're going to banish six cards from the extra deck and find out the top. Uh, mm, 
Uh, six weird ones. They're going to go for the Snake Eye, the normal summon a Droll to activate Snake Eye, but this doesn't really do it, right? They'll go Hydrant, that's going to grab from deck to hand a Preventer, but, uh... Yeah, they're forced to pass here. Okay, well, we can maybe do this. We'll go Fenrir, we'll activate the effect of the Batistina. We will normal summon a Sentinel, then activate the effect of the Demigod and grab a copy of the Continuous Spell. They will draw and lock here. Good thing we didn't Fenrir immediately. We'll activate the effect of the Fenrir, and then we'll activate the Breath of the Batistina to send a Hound. Summon the Hound. We are trying our best to play around Nibiru, and in doing so, fall prey to the Boarded when going first, evenly matched. No big deal, we'll just play Fenrir solo from here on out. Our opponent draws for turn, and that does not do it. We are going to walk with it. So we're back with the deck, and let this be a lesson to you. You can win with anything on the Edo Pro ladder. Let's do the pros and cons. First, the pros. One, the deck's engine is fairly small, allowing for a variety of non-engine going second cards or hand traps. Breath of the Testina can also often be used as a spell speed one Book of Moon while comboing. Two, easy rank 10 access allows you to leave a OTK onto unsuspecting opponents. And three, even without that, the deck has fairly high OTK potential in general if you don't need to play around too much. And the cons. One, the deck struggles to play through hand traps. And when I say hand traps, I mean pretty much any hand trap. An Ash on Demigod can leave you with no plays at all. Two, mismatched levels leads to having to rely on generic link plays, which are weak, or drawing extra combo pieces so you can extend. And three, uh, there's no one card combo, which means you need to invest a lot of resources for fairly underwhelming plays. Overall, while the deck has some interesting design elements, right now it's pretty weak. Time to pray that the extra cards on an OCG release fixes the many holes in this deck. It's happened several times before. Thanks so much for watching. A huge shout out to all of my patrons, but specifically Elena Tincher, Alex Perea, Allison Elliott, Bacon for Hire, Brett Henry, Kenor, Da Bears, Darkmaster Zork, Derpin Dragon, DJ Elephant, John Piet, Jordan Koontz, King Magic Ruler, Nightmare, Legal Rights, Lockstone, Luis Hernandez, Matthew M. Derezzo, MBT Play Medolce, Melfi Stan, Mike Carlotti, Puffins of Doom, Rose Lapine, Solar Flare the Ricka Queen, Storm King 01, Troy Says Buy Erasure is Gay, Vincent Storm, Who's Nick, Wonder Waffle, Yuki, and Your Socks Are Moist Again. Couldn't do it without you. And now, time to put this in the fridge.